Hello and thank you for joining us for our Office Site Portal and Website Editor webinars. Today we will be doing an overview of the Website Editor tool. We will begin by logging into your Office Site or Dentrix portal and navigating to the Website Editor section. Once you're there, you'll click Edit Website and this will launch the Website Editing tool. Once the editing tool has fully loaded, you will notice that there are several settings options to the top of the screen as well as over to the left hand side. We will briefly cover each of those before hopping into the website editing tool. Once the editing tool has loaded, you will notice there are several settings options on the top of the screen as well as over to the left hand side. We will briefly cover each of those before hopping into the website editing tool. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll notice the blue bar with the first option of editor already selected. That's because we're currently in the Website Editor tool. Moving down the list, we will click on Pages Next. Pages is where each of your existing website pages will be listed. Each page has a group of icons for different settings options on the right here. You can duplicate a page, edit a page's design or content, edit the existing settings for the page, or completely delete it here. You also have the option to add new pages, which you can also do in the editor tool, but we will go over that shortly. Next on the list on the left hand side of the menu here is the media manager. This is where all of your website photos and files will be stored. It's important to note that you cannot add images or files directly from your desktop to the website in the editor tool. All photos and files must be uploaded here in the media manager first. You can add folders to keep your files organized that way or sort by what type of media or file you'd like to see and what order to view it in. If you are working with the doc, such as a PDF that you wish to link some text or an image on your website to, you will click the file once in the media manager and that file's info will appear on the right of the screen. You can get the URL by selecting the click here next to the URL. Finally, we have the settings option on the left hand side menu. This is where you can update any important account and location information, add Google Analytics or other third party website tracking codes, or you can add your own pop ups and banners to the website. You may notice that there are some options or settings that we did not cover in this session. That is either because we will be covering them in a separate, more in-depth webinar, or they are not commonly used by our clients. Now that we've covered what the left-hand side menu options are, let's also go over the different options we see at the top of the screen. In order to do that, I'm going to navigate back to the Website Editor tool first. Starting at the far right, you'll notice your name in the top right corner. You can click on this to either change your portal password or you can log out completely. You can also navigate back to the client portal, which we've discussed in a separate webinar. The next option is the blue publish button. This button is extremely important as this is what will actually push all of your changes and edits you make to your live website. This means if you log into the portal and update a staff photo and you do not hit the publish button when you're done, the changes will not be live. It's also important to note that once you hit the publish button, it will be timed out until the changes are successfully published live. You can continue to make additional edits, but you will not be able to click the publish button again for approximately five minutes. The publish button is also a nice safety net. For example, if you accidentally add an extra photo to your website and can't figure out how to remove it, as long as you don't hit that publish button, no one will ever see it, and you're more than welcome to contact us for assistance at 877-237-1529, or you can also email us at hs1-support at officesite.com. The next option up top here is going to be the preview mode, and this is very helpful as it gets rid of the editing tool so that you can navigate through your website as if you were a visitor instead of in the editing tool. 
Once you're finished, all you have to do is click the green close preview button and you'll be right back in editing mode. Next to the preview button, you will see an icon that looks like a computer monitor. If you click this, you can also easily see what your website will look like on a tablet as well as a mobile phone. And finally, this little information button allows you to see what theme you're using, your practice name, as well as your website domain. Now that we've gone over the different settings and options, let's dive into the editor tool. This will be a basic overview and we will cover more in-depth edits and changes in separate videos. When you're in the editor tool and you start to move your mouse around the page, you will notice blue boxes start to appear around the different components of the website. These blue boxes indicate the component that you're about to select to make an edit to. For example, if I wanted to make changes to the logo, I would mouse over the logo and regular left mouse click inside that blue box and an edit button will pull up for me to select and then it will bring an editing tool window up from the left. The editing tool window will have several different tabs at the top of the window. The first one is the local modules content. We can edit or replace the current image and change the text that you see. You will also notice there is a field for alt text and this is a required field. It should include a brief and accurate description of the image. Alt text is not only used for SEO and website accessibility purposes, but as image placeholders if the images are slow to load for any reason. Finally, you can choose the link the logo is set to go to when it's clicked. Currently, it's set to go to my internal website pages and to home, which makes sense. However, if your image or text is going to a third party link like your Facebook page, you want to make sure to open the link in a new tab. This way, the user is not completely navigated away from your website and it will still be up in the previous tab as they are led to your Facebook page in the new one. The settings tab at the top allows you to choose which components of the logo will be visible. You can even turn it off on certain views like desktop, mobile, or tablet and manually resize the image. We will go over resizing and um, image editing in a more, more in-depth separate video. Finally, you can choose the layout of your logo, image, and text in the last tab at the top, whether you'd like the image to be on the left and the text on the right, vice versa, or on the top or bottom. Once you've finished all of your changes, you will click the Done option on the bottom of the window, and the window will close out and you'll be back in the Website Editor tool. The next area that I will go over how to edit is the slider images. This will be very similar to the logo module with a few noticeable differences. As you can see, we have all the same tabs at the top of the editing window as the logo, but each tab's options will look a bit different. Each slider will have its own set of options and settings to choose from. You can also choose to turn off certain sliders instead of deleting them completely. If we want to make changes to the first slide, we will click on the pencil and paper icon that's associated with it, and you will see almost all the same options the logo had. You'll notice here, occasionally this pop-up window will come up asking, do you want to save your current changes? And if you've made any, you want to hit yes. In this instance, I have not, so I will hit no. And then our next menu will pull up. We can edit or replace images, just like with the logo change the text, add our alt text, and set the link. The main difference to note here is that we have a call to action text option. This is for the button on the slider image and can either all say the same thing or be customized per slide. Some people also choose to have a video background and in those instances it would be best to send any edits or requests for that to the support team. Once we've finished our edits with this particular slide, we'll hit save and it will kick us back to our original menu where we'll go next to the settings tab 
The settings will also have some extra features such as the animation used when switching slides very similar to PowerPoint, the speed at which the slides change and pause. Just like the logo settings, you can also choose device visibility down here. And finally, the layout tab, just like with the logo, allows you to choose how the text and call to action button are displayed on the slides. Once we're finished here, we'll hit done and get right back into the editor again. The next area we will go over editing is simple text content. And in order to do that, I need to scroll down to the text on the home page. As you can see, that blue box has appeared around my text, so I will regular left mouse click inside that text and hit the edit button. And you'll see this black bar has appeared across the top of my screen. This should look very similar to Microsoft Word. And then you'll notice that your mouse is also now a cursor and you can either start typing or select where you would like to start typing. If I want to make any changes to the text I just added, we can highlight it just like with Microsoft Word. We can bold it, italicize, underline. We can add a link to the text with this little chain link icon here. Insert link. I'm going to go ahead and keep it inside the website, my page. Maybe we'll leave that to the appointment. We don't need to open it in a new tab because we're staying inside the website. And I'll hit save. And you can see this is now a link. You can also insert images into the text by clicking this little upload media button. It almost looks like a play button and it will pull up the media manager where you have all of your docs and photos for your website stored already. If you need to upload new ones, you do so here and then you can select it. If I wanted to do that, I could hit insert and our alt text is very important. Remember, I will add a name. It doesn't need to be linked, and I'm going to align it to the left. If for some reason you don't like it, you can just highlight it and remove it. And then once you're done, you have to make sure to hit this blue save button at the end of this black bar. We also want to go over how to make any changes to your practice information. So I'm going to scroll down to the business hours as an example. If you'd like to change your business hours, you'll see this blue box has appeared around. I'm going to click inside, hit the edit hours home, and this familiar window will pull up from the left. This is my primary location. It is toggled on, so I know that that is the one that we're viewing. I'm going to go ahead and click the edit button. And I'm going to change my Monday hours from 9 to 5 to 8 to 4. As I click on the 9, you can see that it's been highlighted. And I can just click the 8 on my keyboard, and it'll automatically change it. I'm not going to change this part. I'll go ahead and change the 5 to the 4. And if I did want to do 430, the 00 is already highlighted, so I can type in the 30. And we want to keep it at PM, of course. I'll hit Save and Done. You can see my Monday hours have been updated successfully. Finally, we did already go over how to add new pages over on the left-hand side menu, but you can also do so in the navigation bar at the very top. You can see that blue bar has appeared around all of these as well. I'm just going to click anywhere inside there and hit Add Navigation Header. And this is where I can add a new page. And as you can see, this is actually really great that this comes up because sometimes these things just don't seem to be working. So what I'm going to do is close it out and hit this clear cache on the top left. Once it's cleared, I'm going to go ahead and refresh in my browser and just try it again. I'm going to go up to the navigation, hit edit navigation header, and then hit add page. And as you can see, now it's working. Occasionally, if we make too many edits back to back, the editor just needs a quick refresh. I can either add a new page or add an existing page link. If I'm adding a new page, I want to choose the display name, the page name, which will be different, 
and then the hyperlink should automatically load for you based on the title that you chose. The page layout will almost always be full width. The page type should always be text. And the primary link is based on how you'd like it to be in the nav. Do you want it to be a main option or would you like it to be nested under maybe the staff or the patient education section as an example? So in this case, if I had a blog, I think it would make sense to put it under the patient education. Of course, this file or this page already exists and it'll tell me that. So now I can just actually go to the add an existing page link. We're going to make it say blog as well. And we're going to link it to the blog page, but I'm still going to add it as a secondary link under patient education. And now you can see it's there. I'll hit done. And then it should be nested under patient education. This will conclude our basic editor tool overview. Thank you so much for tuning in and please take a look at some of our other videos that offer a more in-depth look at certain applications, products, and services, as well as the website editor tool features.